Hello, my name is Agnes Ngassa. I am an associate specialist in emergency medicine and I work for Hillingdon Hospital. I've been an SS doctor since 2005. It's a, it's a while now, <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, I enjoy my role, uh, I, I enjoy my position. Um, yeah, Paul? okay, uh, I'm Paul uh, Bisnar. I'm uh, originally from Philippines. Uh, I became a specialty doctor uh, in 2013. I was um, in uh, Hospital, a &E. uh, I enjoyed my work. Um, from uh, from 2013 as an ASS, um, I developed my senior decision making, uh, whether clinical or uh, leadership or managerial. So I enjoy my work. How would you recommend someone to develop into a SAS role? What would you be your recommendations for someone wanting to extend into into other roles from being SAS and develop themselves? Process. There are opportunities. I will speak for myself. I'm the clinical, lead, uh, gov the clinical governance lead of the department, which takes a lot. And I'm a SAS doctor. I'm the lead. And I'm also an appraiser. And I am a clinical supervisor. I am an educational supervisor. So these are the role that SAS doctor can take on as well and, and develop themselves. Yeah. Um, I was about to become an LAS instructor, but I kind of stopped midway. But yeah, so you could, it's, it's limitless, really. There's so much that you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one opportunity arose from me is when I was an a was like a sub-investigator of our research. So as I said, I can do that, you know. Um, so uh, I enjoyed that moment, the time, you know, uh, during uh, research period, you know. So I think uh, research is one of the areas that SIS can pursue. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Imad Qureshi. I'm the current chair of MSAS, which is the Emergency Medicine Specialty and Specialist Doctors Forum at the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. I'm also uh, a college trustee board member and I work on the Isle of Wight uh, in the emergency department. I'm the clinical governance lead there. I think that um, SAS doctors have the opportunity, again, because they are um, substantive members of staff, to contribute so much more to the workplace. They can take on leadership roles. They can take on educational responsibilities. They can also take on roles outside of their specialty, which are required. Um, such as medical examiner roles, um, being uh, SAS tutors, uh, being on the local negotiating committee. There are so many different roles that SAS doctors can undertake that make their presence in an organization more meaningful and more impactful. And so I would advise people to find that little niche space which they are excited about uh, and build their own credibility and their place in it. Um, there's so many different things that people can undertake. There's informatics, there is guidelines, patient safety, like I said, appraising, ed educating, simulation. There's so many different roles. And then there's also roles outside of um, the workplace as well, um, taking on private work like I do occasionally, um, being a crowd doctor for various um, sporting clubs and events. If you were encouraging someone to join SAS, why, what would you say to them? What, what are the really good perks of being a SAS doctor? What's the interesting points? And also, uh, what are the challenges? I think the perks are the flexibility and also um, the fact that we can work around our families. Uh, very important, you know, children going to school, having to work around that and having that flexibility to be there with them and Yes, I think that helps. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I think I have the same answer with um, uh, Agnes, you know, uh, because uh, uh, my, um, uh, I think family for me is the reason why I went to SAS. Okay. And, uh, and also the uh, experience I gained from SAS, I think uh, 
like developing, like I said before, decision making uh, clinically. You can uh, advise your junior doctors clinically and sometimes uh, um, some non clinical things. So uh, that's it. Yeah. I guess the challenge is to become, um, I mean, an SS doctor. Um, for those that want to uh, climb the ladder, career ladder quickly, I, I probably suggest it's not the best route uh, because uh, it can be quite challenging to, to do it solo. Yeah, while if you're in training, there's a cohort of doctors in training, is helpful and you have a set pathway, shall we say. But as an SS doctor, if you want to follow, a, to pursue, if you like to pursue a career, uh, to, so it, it can be daunting to do it solo, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, you know, SAS can do also uh, some consultants work, you know, like uh, Agnes, he was able, uh, he, um, he, uh, as you know, he's a uh, lead in our uh, clinical, you know, governance, clinical business, you know, yeah. so, you know, uh, as an SAS, you can do that. So uh, there are many things that, uh, amazing works that SAS can do. Brilliant. Just explain a bit about the specialist grade. As foreign graduate, first of all, um, you're kind of drawn into emergency medicine because it's, it's kind of general, it gives an overview, and it's a good uh, point of entrance into uh, uh, medicine in the UK, how to practice it. And when I joined and I discovered that I was very passionate about emergency medicine, so I kind of stayed <laughs> in emergency medicine. But having kids, it was difficult for me to go into um, a training position. So, um, and I love this, this specialty, but I could only continue as a, as an SES doctor giving my, my, my personal issues and everything. Um, the specialty in itself, um, yeah, it can be daunting, but it's quite uh, rewarding. Like I think you might say earlier on, type A, it takes certain type of people to do, to do it day in, day out for so many years. Um, and it's very clinically, uh, uh, clinical driven. I would say, most of, yeah, most of our work, most clinical driven. So, yeah, I enjoy it. I ask a lot of people to consider SAS as a career option, um, especially the ones that are more junior and coming out of their foundation years of training, uh, to explore and see what specialties they're interested in. But once you've sort of made up your mind what you want, what specialty you want to work in, um, an SAS career offers a lot of things that you wouldn't find. There is financial stability. It's a substantive contract. There is opportunities to progress in your career. But there's also that stability that you get with being uh, fixed in a place and a chance to improve your portfolio, explore different ideas, start a family. There's lots of reasons why, choose, why people choose um, an SAS job as a career. And I think everybody has to make the right choice for them. It can't be one size that fits all. And sometimes going into training isn't for everybody. Your journey into the specialist grade would be interesting. So the specialist grade that uh, got introduced in 2021 when the new SAS contracts came out, it was a great opportunity to re-explore those, uh, how those people fit into the NHS who have an extended set of skills, extended qualifications, and the competence, <clears throat> knowledge, and skills to function at a very high independent level. I've been working um, as an independent practitioner in emergency medicine almost all of my career in emergency medicine. I started working as a staff physician in the National Guards of Saudi Arabia um, in 2008. Uh, which was the same year that I became an associate fellow uh, at the college. And I found that it was deeply rewarding working in emergency medicine. 
Uh, I was um, working independently. Occasionally I sought advice from seniors, but my patients were mine. <clears throat> and when I moved to the UK, um, I felt that training wasn't the right choice for me. So I joined um, a trust as a specialty doctor, uh, worked my way through um, some rotations for Caesar, did my exams, um, and then progressed my way up to working at consultant level. So um, I'm originally from Cameroon, but I studied medicine in another European country. And so from that country, I moved to the UK to practice medicine. And I was very um, pleasantly surprised that there were quite a, um, a multicultural background workforce within the healthcare in the UK. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, but as much as there were that representation of, um, of different ethnicities, um, I also noticed that there are less represent, representation from, if shall we say, any minority background at senior roles. And I mean, since joining healthcare, there's been progress. I will, I will give that. There's been massive progress, but I think there's still need a bit of work to be done to see. Because um, I think by seeing se senior um, people of the same background at senior roles will be encouraging and uh, yeah encouraging and and motivating yeah it will be because um i mean people will be stri stri sorry striving to get there as well but if you have no representation then you tend to think that your level is there and and that's it but i think more representation at senior role will be good that's right yeah, um, I like what Martin Luther King said, you know, I always um, I don't judge a person by its uh, skin color, but by his uh, judge a person by, it, you know, car character. So I just want to mm. paraphrase it. Mm. So uh, I think uh, I think many international medical graduates are very uh, capable. OK, uh, they are very educated and highly skilled, you know, and and their character is really, uh, you know, success driven. I can say most of the SAS. So uh, I think uh, um, so I think there's still inequality, but I think uh, they're doing their best, you know, to correct mm -hmm. those. So I think it takes time, but it will be there. I'm a, a graduate a graduate of the Army Medical College in Pakistan. So I was a military Pakistani man, a very uh, highly stereotyped kind of uh, a person to be. Um, and the things that I've learned over the years as I've mellowed is um, working on emotional intelligence, working around supporting other people. And I think that ties in well uh, to equality work as well. I mean, with the college uh, work that's going on uh, on differential attainment, for example, from pe for people from various backgrounds uh, and people who've got primary medical qualifications from other parts of the world. It is very important work, but I also see how organizations, the college um, employers are working to be more inclusive um, when it comes to us as Muslims, how Ramadan is being uh, celebrated within the workplace, how more and more employers are able to offer halal food in their restaurants. So I think all of those little bits go a long way in rebuilding that trust and in being inclusive in general. I think there's a lot of reflection on my part uh, when it came to SAS well-being or my own well-being. And it started with uh, a period in my career where uh, things weren't going well. Um, and I stopped to reflect and think who I was. And you've got to realize if who you are is only defined by the work that you do professionally, then you haven't got it right. I'm, I've always considered myself an emergency physician and an educator, but 
not re- not acknowledging, <clears throat> not giving time, not giving importance to the fact that I'm a son and I'm a father and I'm a husband and I'm a table tennis player and all those other things is maybe one uh, key way to fail at being good at everything you are. And it takes a toll on your professional work as well. So for your own well-being, I would advise everybody to remember who they are and not just be defined by their career or their specialty. There's a lot uh, to be proud about being SAS. Um, So as an SAS doctor, I contribute as much as I want and wherever I want within the organization, externally, at the college. I've just recently been uh, appointed as vice chair uh, of the SAS committee at the Academy of Medical Royal Colleges. So all that work is possible because of a SAS career. Whereas if I was um, a resident doctor, or postgraduate doctor in training, the focus would have been on my portfolio and getting through exams and becoming a consultant as quickly as possible. Um, so I have I currently work on the consultant rota. I've got um, a Caesar application lined up, and I can proudly say that I'm SAS by choice and haven't submitted my Caesar application because I want to continue this role within MSAS, within the college and within the academy to help other SAS doctors become the best versions of themselves that they can be professionally and personally. You two are SAS advocates because you're doing this interview, Um, (laughs) but um, let's focus on the SAS well-being part. Definitely uh, part of well-being is uh, sports. when I say sports, I mean gym, <laughs> going to the gym, switching off, trying to switch off because I personally, at the personal level, I struggle, uh, but I'm learning. <laughs> As I'm aging, I'm learning to switch off um, and do more things outside work, like going to the gym. Um, I've got a teenage daughter, so I try to spend more time with her and just do little things. Just walk and go for ice cream, nothing fancy, but just spending time with her and actually listening to her. Yeah. Yeah. Paying attention. Well, before it was, it was work, work, work and work. I would carry work home. Uh, and obviously by doing so, I lock myself in the room and just be by myself. So I, I think I've learned, I'm learning still <laughs> that I've got to separate things. So yeah, gym, walking, Spending time with my daughter, yeah. Yeah, I agree. You know, spending time with quality time with your your family, your kids, you know, and also uh, have a cat or have a dog. I have a cat, you know. Oh, so wow. when I go home, his name is Kenny. Uh, uh, we had it uh, during the COVID time, and you know, during those depressing time, you know, it, uh, that cat gave a lot of, you know. Um, happiness in our home, you know, uh, despite of the stress during the COVID time. So having a dog or having a cat, I think it's a good idea to, have to like uh, what Iman said, you know, to, I think, want to procure for burnout, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay.